I was while we're on music really quick. Okay, you remember that one episode? Uh, what episode? Oh, okay. No, I'm lying. Okay, so it's the bonus one. <laughs> and I don't know if you remember, but when I came on, I was like, party people. Yeah. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So last night I was like, no, what is it? Is it Wolf? Wolf, there it is. And I was like, let me look it up. <laughs> it's Wolf, there it is. It is. <laughs> I just couldn't remember. Wait, because I just couldn't remember what he said. What he said after party people, but he'd be like, "Yeah, tag team music in full effect. <laughs> That's me, DC, brain free, <laughs> and my man Steve Rowland." <laughs> I just, I don't know why that was stuck in my head that day. <laughs> but I just kept going. What is it from Tootsie Roll? And I was like, "No, it's not Tootsie Roll." Yeah, because they all did kind of sound the same. <laughs> they all did kind of sound the same way, but I, I literally yeah. took a note. It say in prom night, the song party people is whoop. There it is. Cause I was editing it. And I was like, <laughs> I remember what it is. I have to make sure I tell her. That is funny. Yes. Now that's going to be stuck in my head. You're welcome. I forgot what I was going to say. Because what did you say? Oh, you About were what? singing the song. I was like, oh, I was singing, let's get it all day, huh? The story behind that song. <laughs> let's get it all day, you know, you know, you heard. You talking about the explicit? Cause I, yes. Because you notice how it's gone now. Completely. Like it never Completely, happened. Completely, yep. Like it never happened. Because I remember happened. when I first heard it and I was like, they really did this. <laughs> What said like, the word? Is, and you gotta hear the whole part, like the word and the noise he was making. <laughs> oh my god, I had I know what your job yes. heard it. Oh yes. my god, I didn't think about it like that. Yeah. Oh my god, because <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking like, I mean, people sometimes used to say that, like almost yeah. like how people say get dumb. But I didn't yeah. think about the fact of like them doing the sound afterwards. Yeah. You look back and you're like, hmm, that is a little insensitive. <laughs> yes. I was like, oh my God. Cause I oh I just only ever heard it like a few times, probably like twice. And I know the first time I heard it, that's how I was like, what is this? Are they for oh real? Oh my God. And they was for real. They were serious. Who? <sighs> Rest in peace, Ridiculous. Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> Rest in peace. Um. Oh shoot! Hold on, I had a little block. I was okay. Let me get it together. All right. <laughs> People are like, why are your beginnings always so chaotic? Chaotic. Chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> why are your intros so chaotic? She don't edit them. <laughs> oh man, you gotta Keeping give them real. a little behind the scenes. <laughs> Keeping it real. Okay. The tame stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Greetings, strangers. I'm Britt. And I'm D. I should have waited. <clears throat> hey, why Sorry. did you do that? I'm thirsty. You've done that before too. You literally did that before too. So don't come for me. You was drinking wine because it's in a recording. And I was like, so you just gonna oh, sip your wine. <laughs> That's funny. Welcome to another episode of It's, it's a, a Strange, strange world, world After All. all. The podcast where we discuss true crime cases, the supernatural urban legends, conspiracy theories, and all of the things that keep the world strange. Hi guys. We have finally settled the accent <laughs> debate. Technically we didn't. Yes, we did. Uh, it was in <laughs> a strange two for one for two about axe murders, the Velisca axe murders, and then the axe man. That was the episode. And I was we attempting. need to clip it. I was gonna say we need to clip it 
and post a poll and say, is this a New Orleans accent? And have them no. vote yes or no. You were asking, had I attempted a New Orleans accent? And I was like, yeah, I tried to speak oh, in the okay. New Orleans. I was speaking it not okay. like, oh, I was never like, this is for sure. I kept going, this is my <laughs> New Orleans. And you was like, what is that? My New Orleans accent. <laughs> then the other one was my okay. Cajun accent. When I was like, okay, you have called. <laughs> But that <laughs> is settled. What was going to be the monologue, though, so the people could know? It was going to be the, what's the, I don't even know the name of the speech, but it was the Friends Romans Countryman. Lend me oh, your ears. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man, I wanted to hear it. We'll but. come up. We'll come up with something <laughs> else. Something else. <laughs> That's funny. Fun fact, though, before we get started. So in high school, in literature, we had to recite that whole speech. And every time we messed up, we got a point taken off. And that was our final grade. I was the only one who got 100. Come on, girl. (laughs) And I could not recite that to this day. (laughs) I just know the beginning. I would have rapped it or sang it. Oh, Lord. Because you don't never forget <laughs> songs. I still remember the, uh, what is it? For the Spanish, like, speaking, like, countries, and then, like, the capitals. It's like, Caracas, Venezuela, Bogota, Colombia, Quito, Ecuador, Lima, Peru. Y'all didn't learn that? <laughs> no. La Paz, I've never heard Bolivia. That. <laughs> To this day, I, we learned that in like sophomore what? Spanish high school, and I never remember yeah, it to I, this day. That's we funny. never learned that. <laughs> you should sing everything. That's how you remember it. <laughs> okay, we're back with part two to the Ronald Dominique story. He was also known as the Bayou Strangler. Ronald is a serial killer and rapist who murdered at least 23 men and boys in Louisiana between July 1997 and 2006. So now we're on part two. So we left off with, this was the first victim, David Mitchell. The next two murders took place also in St. Charles Parish. So the first was in December 1997 when he strangled 20-year-old Gary Pierre who had recently been arrested for drug trafficking. His body would later be found fully clothed with no signs of physical trauma or drugs found in his system. The second killing happened on July 31st, 1998, when Ronald killed 38-year-old Larry Ranson, a drug-addicted vagrant. Larry was the first victim subjected to bondage by Ronald. So for... Gary Pierre, what Mm -hmm. did they rule his death as if he didn't have like drugs in his system or physical trauma? Because I know with the other one, with the first one, David, weren't they saying he drowned? They were trying to say he drowned? Yeah, they said he drowned. Um, I don't think they said really, because even um, Larry, they really didn't say anything about Larry either. Or was it, so was it like an accidental death? Or was it just... They didn't... That's I couldn't (laughs) find anything on that. Yeah, because at this point, I'm just like, okay, are they... At this point, they're still not doing anything. The police, they're not... Yeah. (sighs) Okay. Because again, like, they probably didn't care. They were drug addicts. They were black. They were homeless. So they're probably not even really putting it together. I don't think. Well, well, never mind. He was arrested for drug trafficking. But was he even drug trafficking if there were no drugs found even in his system for uh, Gary Pierre? That's what I was thinking. Like, why would you think that he. That he what? I don't know. Died of an overdose or something like that. Because. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Like this one, even though this one is a long episode, they really I felt like. They didn't really go into detail about a lot of the victims. Oh, okay. So, yeah. It was They named them, but they really didn't go into detail like that. Yeah. 
In early October 1998, Ronald met 27-year-old Oliver LeBanks. Ronald claimed Oliver offered him sexual services in exchange for money. Ronald says they had sex and he beat and strangled him after. Oliver's body was found on October 4th. During the autopsy, traces of Ronald's semen were found on Oliver's body. Between October 1998 and August 1999, Ronald committed five more murders in Jefferson Parish. In October 1998, he met 16-year-old Joseph Brown in Kenner and lured him into his truck to buy crack from him. After doing the crack together, Ronald attacked the teenager, beating him several times on the head with a blunt object and then strangled him with a plastic bag. A month later, 18-year-old Bruce Williams fell victim to Ronald in similar circumstances. We forgot to do a trigger warning for this episode, so trigger warning for extreme violence and sexual assault. I apologize. Yeah. But 16? Yeah. Man. That's really young. That is sad. I hate that they don't... I hate that the serial killer is the one that's sensationalized like you said and that there's not enough information about like the victims because i'm curious to know what joseph's family life was like like why why are you 16 years old out in the streets doing crack that's like i want to know what his family life is like does he have a family how do we get here yeah that i'm trying to remember if it was discussed more in the documentary because I do know they were interviewing. I want to say, was it just the one guy? Because they, they had a survivor on there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I can't remember if it was just him, though, because I saw it so long ago. Yes, uh, but like years ago. Yeah. But I'm wondering if it was any more details than that. Yeah. I might watch it again. It was just so... <sighs> so slow a lot of good information it was yeah just a do- it was a documentary like yes yeah like i've been now conditioned to watch like i feel like now documentaries have turned into this huge production of sorts like netflix documentaries yeah and Hulu yeah. documentaries yeah instead of just like oh someone sitting there and they're giving me information and i show like pictures or yeah yeah that's how that one was it was just yeah To the point. Yeah. Straight to the point. In May 1999, Ronald was driving around Kinder when he came across 21-year-old Manuel Reed, who offered to sell him drugs. Ronald agreed to let him into his truck where he raped and strangled Manuel. Ronald dumped his body in a dumpster about a mile from where Joseph Brown's body was found. Semen was also found on Manuel's body. Nope, go ahead. I was about to say, so he waited a year, but all right, never mind. I think I read that wrong at oh. first. Because it was from 1998 to 1999, he committed five murders. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Or is that just in that town? So he did more in another parish? It was just in that parish, in Jefferson Parish. Okay. So is Joseph? So Joseph is a part of the five. No. Okay. So he killed more. Oh, okay. So he killed more than that yeah. in a year's in a year's time, or yeah, in less than a year's has, time. Yeah, because he has. If you, yeah, because if you think about it, he has a total of at the least twenty three victims. Okay. And uh, it's not gonna be. I th- I don't think they named them because they couldn't really prove that it was him who did it because. These are just the ones. So like if we mention like we just did where it says he killed five more people, it's because they couldn't link him to it. But they pretty much know he did it. Oh, and then again, those victims, it's no information. Yeah. So even if I wanted to look into it and get the names, I probably wouldn't find anything. Okay, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah. 
A month later, Ronald killed 21-year-old Angel Mejia, a homeless man with past convictions for drug possession. At first, Ronald tried to dump his body in a garbage container, but after seeing it was full, he dumped the body on the street. This whole thing is messed up, but he just, like, what is, what are you doing? I just never understand what makes a person like that to want to, you know how you just like, what makes people become what they are? Because this is ridiculous. And it's like, you think, okay, you have one killer and you're like, okay, can't get any worse than that. And then it's like even more sick and depraved people out there. I'm like, oh my God. Because even with this, you know how when you search people, it'll um, give you similar people like on Google and stuff. So how I find a lot of cases. So like when I was working on this, a lot of other people popped up. So I would just click on the names and it got to a point where I just had to take a break for you to just kill somebody for no reason. And then just dump their body like in the middle of the street. You okay? My mic was muted. I was like, girl, I'm sitting up here trying to talk to you this whole time. I was like, and then it didn't even look like your mouth was moving because I was looking dead at you. It's because the mic is right in front of my mouth. <laughs> oh, I was like, what? that's funny because I had it like this. I was, I'm so sorry. So my mic was muted. Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> <laughs> but I was asking, sheesh, I was saying, because you were saying at one point you had to stop. You were saying because of the severity of this murder or just the number of serial killers in general what were you saying just all the different people doing stuff like all the different people him plus the different people okay that's what i was confused about i was like because yeah this is this in itself is a lot that's what i was yeah saying yeah to know but then yeah to know that there are so many people i yeah so many people that have done something similar that are just as sick yeah i can imagine like how that would be a lot i think it was another episode where i made a comment and i was like missing persons cases just make you think like is it just somebody like lurking around every corner waiting for like a woman to be by themselves or a kid to be alone it's like dang because how often does it happen how it happens often and then it happens Mm -hmm. like that it happens so quickly it's like whoa how many kidnappers are there out there? Like how, how many people are out there in this world that do this and have a whole like family? They're in the church. They might have kids. Like how is this possible? Yeah, because we met. Yeah, we mentioned. I think we mentioned that on the first part because we were talking we about uh, what's his name? Because he was in the church and was like, I think he was in charge of the youth choir. But I'm like, you yeah. just never know. No, uh, you never know. In late August, Ronald met 34-year-old Mitchell Johnson, offering him drugs in exchange for sexual favors. He then took Mitchell to the forest where he tied, raped, and strangled him. Mitchell's fully nude body was found on September 1st. In January 2000, Ronald claimed another victim, 23-year-old Michael Vincent in LaForche Parish. In early October, Ronald became closely associated with 20-year-old Kenneth Randolph Jr., a three-time prosecuted child molester who lived near him in the trailer park. Ronald lured him into his trailer, telling him that a girl wanted to have sex with him and then attacked him, tying, raping, and strangling him. He took the body to a field outside the city where the partially naked remains were found on October 6th. So he murdered a, a child sex molester. offender. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. And then how was he even free? Because it said a three-time prosecuted child molester. I. That's a good question. What are, I don't. I'm not familiar with the laws on that. And. I'm not either, but that's three different cases. Yeah. So he must not have been getting that much time for each other because that is so stupid. It is stupid. And then 
did Ronald know that he was a child molester? Is that why they were associated? Maybe, because I'm thinking, I mean, it's a small town, so everybody probably knew. You think? I think that he was a that he was a child molester. Yeah. No, that everybody knew. Knew what? That he was? It has to be public record. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So that's true. On October twelfth, two thousand two, Ronald met twenty six year old Anoka Jones on the streets of Homa. He attacked Anoka, tied him up, raped and strangled him. Ronald dumped his body under a highway overpass where it was discovered several hours later. During this period, Ronald and his sister moved to rural Bayou Blue. Around this time, Ronald killed 19-year-old Detrell Woods, dumping both him and his bike in a field outside the city. Detrell's decomposed and partially naked body remained undiscovered until May 2003. And the last one, he hit him under an uh, overpass because that one was what I was about to say. Man, he don't care. He just, and how is nobody seeing him? Like he just didn't care. He was just dumping a body under a highway overpass. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. And then, Cause, yeah. Wh- no, go ahead because you're a wood. No, because I was going to say, how was, how did nobody see that? Yeah. But, I mean, it could have been like real late, late at night. Then he dumped another body, just dumped it on the street. Yeah, but I mean, a lot of killers do that because the one, what was the one uh, in Oak Cliff? Uh, the eyeball, eyeball killer. He dumped one of their bodies in the street in front of a school, I think. So, oh. I mean, it does happen. Yeah. Because I wonder if they, like, do that on purpose. Yeah, that's another thing I was trying to get at. Was, yeah, was he doing it on purpose? Was he Because, I mean, he was getting get away caught? with it for so long. Either he did, was doing it on purpose or he just got cocky. Yeah, he got careless. Yeah. In October 2004, Ronald met 46-year-old Larry Matthews, a drug addict who also dealt drugs on the side. I ain't gonna say nothing. He lured him. Why <laughs> you be a drug addict and deal with little drugs on the side? <laughs> um, he lured him to his house with the promise of drugs, but during the process, Larry lost consciousness due to an overdose. After which, Ronald raped and strangled him. He later dumped his body twenty miles away from the crime scene. Nobody reported Larry missing because he was homeless and his identity had had later been determined by his fingerprints. Which I feel is the same for most of them. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking that now. Now I was thinking that when I was thinking, okay, well, why did it take them so long to find them? Was anybody looking for them? He's literally just coming up in here, snatching up these African-American yep. men and raping them and just casually, very casually disposing of their bodies. And nobody is saying a thing, doing a thing. And then two, I think we mentioned it at the beginning on the first part, how this didn't get a lot of coverage because of um, Hurricane Katrina. So people were more worried about that, really, than this. We said Hurricane Katrina was in 2005, right? Mm-hmm. So the media coverage would have been, like, almost post a lot of these, right? A lot of these uh, murders, because he ended around 2006. Yeah. So, and then I think it it was probably, like, what am I trying to say? Because he got caught, like, in 2004, 2005. Okay. And of course, I feel like when it was happening, there was coverage on the news, but I'm not thinking they were like, it wasn't. Was I there coverage important. on the news, though? That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't, I'm trying to remember <laughs> if there was. I mean, like, I said local, though. 
Yeah, no, I know. Even yeah. local, I'm wondering. Because if it's something that's like happening repeatedly, especially if they were like, if drugs were like. I'm saying like if, if it was coverage, it probably would have been later. Because I don't think they would have. Because honestly, I don't know when they linked it to one person like, okay, this yeah. is a serial killer. So it could have been a little bit of coverage. And then when he got caught, you would think you would think it would be more coverage. But for Hurricane because Katrina. Of. So, yeah, that's that's crazy to me. It's crazy to me yeah. that the that the link has not been made like that. The connections have not been drawn because of the fact that some of them were found. Like I can see you chalking some of them up to like oh they died of a, an overdose and somebody dumped yeah. them i you know like oh this is just another drug loss but or drug addiction loss but like for the ones that didn't have drugs in their system there were a couple of them that were found in the same way looked the same didn't have like physical trauma and didn't have drugs in their system so near the same parishes so it's kind of almost like how could you not have made those connections I'm trying to think if it was like the same. It was even the same MO because I'm thinking like he was he was strangle him and rape him. That's the yeah. that's the MO. So I don't. Yeah, I wonder when they connected it because that's a lot of victims and that's a long period of time. Yeah, a long period yeah. of time. Ronald's next victim was 21 year old Michael Barnett whose body was found on October 24th, 2004, in Bayou Blue. He was the only known Caucasian victim. Um, And now I'm surprised, because he's white, that that one didn't get a lot of coverage. Was Do we know if he was a drug addict? Possibly. Because maybe that could be why. That could probably be why, if he yeah. was like homeless or a drug addict. Oh, true. The next murder was committed in February 2005. The victim was 22-year-old Leon Lorette. It later turned out that he had lived with two of the victims, Michael Barnett and Anoka Jones. For some time, Lorette was actually considered the main suspect in Anoka's murder as he was the last one to see him alive. So yeah, he. I wonder if he knew they were roommates, Ronald. Or is the the parish just that small to where it was like a coincidence that they were roommates? Oh, and I was thinking, and I'm not trying to be funny. I truly was thinking if these were any of the ones that were on drugs, that it could have even been just like a trap house. Because, you know, you have like the shared houses. Yeah, I thought about that, too, but I don't mm-hmm. think so. I think that it would have said that. Oh, OK. Yeah. So by this point, then. By this point, are they, I guess, starting to put the pieces together or they tr- they truly were just treating this as a separate incident like that? Uh, Lord, like they, they were just looking for someone who murdered Michael and Anoka. I couldn't tell you. Okay. Because I'm still kind of just like, okay, in... he was considered a suspect, but did they think he was a serial killer or they just thought he was just responsible for their murder and didn't think anything of it oh that's possible two months later in april ronald met 31 year old august Watkins, a homeless man that he lured offering a place to stay for the night he then raped and strangled him a few days later after killing august ronald killed 23 year old kurt cunningham in a similar fashion that same summer he repeated his actions twice, killing 28-year-old Alonzo Hogan in St. Charles. Sorry, it wasn't even like a tongue slip. I was getting upset. I was starting to get like angry, like oh. as that was why. Because what the fuck? This is so many people. Like, <sighs> yeah. That same summer, he repeated his actions twice, killing 28-year-old. Alonzo Hogan in St. Charles Parish and 17-year-old Wayne Smith in Terrebonne Parish. Unlike the previous victims, they had no prior criminal convictions and were not known to use drugs. So now he's getting 
cocky going after people who won't necessarily well who will be missed basically Mm -hmm. yeah in september 2005 ronald murdered 40 year old chris deville who was trying to hitchhike out of napoleonville after hurricane katrina ronald dumped his body in the fields where it was eaten by rodents over the next few weeks his remains were found in october and identified by relatives man Yeah. In late November, Ronald killed 21-year-old Nicholas Pellegrin in Lafourche Parish. His death was wrongfully thought to be drug-related because his family had told police he borrowed $400 from a local drug dealer. Mm. Was he too strangled and dumped? I'm guessing. Okay, so maybe they weren't putting it together because they were just like, how this, the family told them about the drug dealer and they were like, okay, that's what happened. I don't think they Mm -hmm. even looked into it. So I think everything else they're probably like, oh, overdose or, you know. But then it's like, what about the ones that were strangled? Yeah. And didn't have drugs in their system. Yeah. And didn't have drugs in their system. Yeah. I just... Even if it was drug related, because this is this is the whole thing, like with the crack epidemic, this is starting to be a trend that became an epidemic. Like, at what point do you say, okay, these people are dying at at high volumes? Maybe there's something that we need to be doing. Maybe we need to try to figure out what is going on. Whether or not you think that that's a serial killer, even if you think, okay, well, it's just drugs or gang related. Well, come help us clean up our streets. Like, what the heck? Like, at what point do you think that there is a a problem? I mean, they, this is just my opinion. I feel like they already knew it was a problem. They just didn't care. That, that's what I'm like. Mm, where's the human decency like where is the human decency to say like because if you think about it you said the (laughs) crack epidemic we all know not to sound like a you know like a conspiracy theorist but we all know the government did that that's been yeah so proven i mean there is no human decency because they're the ones who are doing it not to say that all of the blame is on them, but I would say like 90%. <laughs> well, yeah, you dropping stuff into a neighborhood yeah. where people know nothing about it. You're thinking, oh, it's going to be like just like this simple party drug like weed or cocaine. And mm-hmm. no, it, you know, it destroyed yeah. our communities. That's crazy. And the fact that like maybe if more, you hate to say it, you hate to say it, if more caucasian americans were affected by this then maybe there would like it's not an issue or it never was an issue until like more recent times and even still that's questionable until it starts happening in their community just kind of like the uh, opioid crisis it's like it wasn't an issue until it reached until it came knocking on your front door and karen the soccer mom was high and I feel like, though, how can I put this? I feel like it is happening to them. I feel, because I I be trying not to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but (laughs) even though I kind of am one, but you got to throw the media in there too. You got to think of what's being put out there. Like, I feel like, I'm not going to say it's the same, but they push the negative stuff about people of color. Oh, out no, there. I know. And white people are doing the same thing. It's just not being put out there for everybody to no, see. No, I, I wholeheartedly so, know because. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I feel like it, I feel like it's going to take for like something like that to go viral, like with a white person, like, you know, you know what I'm trying to say? For them to be like, oh, this is really. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. saying. You literally have to be. No, and that's not what I meant, though. So, like, the, the the I don't think like that the crack epidemic happened to the white community as it as much as it did oh, our no, community. No, 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 no. 
that's so th- that's what i mean when there, i yeah. said by like it's not a problem until it comes knocking on their front door like how now recently with like big pharma and then that oh yeah how now that yeah. is affecting them they're like oh wait oh now we have a problem but i do agree that the media paints like certain pictures like because i didn't even know i'm gonna be dead honest i did not even know that white people smoked weed like that until i went to college <laughs> and i was like what this was painted as like a, a drug that made you like le- like reefer madness like that made you yeah lazy i was just about to say reefer madness and- unmotivated and only like people of color do it then i found out i was like oh my god even like the stereotype about welfare statistically speaking there are more oh yeah that yeah white americans that benefit yeah. from welfare and government assistance than there are yeah true minority so true i keep forgetting how young like uh woodstock have you not heard of woodstock <laughs> <laughs> no, I have heard of Woodstock. I have heard of Woodstock, but even still, but okay, think about that. If you want to say, okay, so I have heard about white people smoking weed, but think about like how it's painted when they do it versus when it mm-hmm. would be a person of color. Yeah, because if you look at Woodstock, it's like this all like good vibes and this, this, and that. And they just spiritual weed. They're doing more than weed, actually. I was like, they be doing acid, <laughs> mushrooms, fucking. <laughs> dmt like what but then when we do it it's cool when they do it <laughs> it's apollo when i do it fuck them <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that makes me yeah. think we should do a uh we should do a the drug conspiracy episode since you know. oh we should the last confirmed victim was 27 year old christopher sutterfield Ronald hit Christopher on the head with a heavy object, causing him to lose consciousness. After finding his body, police interviewed relatives, friends, and acquaintances. They all confirmed they had last seen him with a man driving a black SUV, but they were unable to describe his appearance. In November 2006, Ronald Dominique came under police suspicion after a man by the name of Ricky Wallace called the police, saying Ronald lured him to his trailer in mid-2006. He promised him drugs and sex with a woman. Ricky says after entering the trailer, Ronald tried to convince him that his girlfriend enjoyed bondage and offered to tie him up. Ricky refused and was allowed to leave. Police didn't believe Ricky at first because he was a drug addict and had repeatedly lied in the past. Police arrested Ronald anyway, and he was interrogated. Ricky is the sleepy dude from the documentary? Okay. (laughs) I I think so, yeah. Okay. (laughs) And the the fact that they didn't believe him because he was a drug addict and nobody thought to say, like, oh, you know what? Actually, a lot of bodies have been turning up for a while now. Yeah. So that maybe. Because so didn't um the Grim Sleeper, didn't, want, didn't like one of his victims, one of the survivors, tell the police, but they didn't. No, the woman, I, we, we've done so many episodes. I think. I know in Anthony Soil that something like that happened something like that happened i remember that's what i'm thinking she of, called the, the police sleeper. and they to file a report and they told her she needed to come in i remember that one and yeah. she never did so they dismissed it <sighs> we have done so many yeah i was thinking of anthony so well though because i just know one of them didn't they like run into like a fast food restaurant mm-hmm. it yeah. was disheveled and they yeah were, everybody in there just laughed and was like oh yeah. she a crackhead Mm-hmm. yeah that was anthony soul yeah so that's mm-hmm. what i was thinking of so yeah that said she was literally like you said disheveled and bleeding and yes. they were just like we tr- they were just like we trying to eat yeah like oh so yeah but i'm glad i am glad even though that they didn't really believe him i'm glad that they arrested him anyway uh yeah. ronald yeah finally take some action i know While he was held at the station, he agreed to give a blood sample. Over the next week, DNA testing matched Ronald's profile with semen that was left on the bodies of Oliver LeBanks and Manuel Reed, resulting in an arrest warrant. 
Ronald was arrested on December 1st, 2006 at a homeless shelter. And can I just say, they show the footage of him being arrested. And I think you, I think they put it on YouTube too. Do you feel like he was putting on for the camera? Or do I you remember mean, it? I don't remember. Because uh, he was like, they were like holding him up and he had like a cane. And I was like, oh, yeah, I think I do kind of remember because, yeah, because I was like, wait, why does he have that? Exactly. Like, I feel like he was kind of like putting on a little bit to look like to look weak almost like I couldn't have done this. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe for people to sympathize with him, too. Like, yeah. Yeah. And why, 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 I can't even talk. Why was he at a homeless shelter <laughs> a homeless in the first shelter. place? Was he volunteering? Was he seeking people out? Oh, that's what I'm thinking. Because he was living with his sister, unless she put him out or unless something uh. happened to her because they was living in a trailer together. Mm-hmm. I did not even catch that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ronald ultimately confessed to 23 murders, describing them in details that only the officers would know. Because he did this, new charges were brought against him. Despite his confession, Ronald refused to admit guilt in any of the attacks. Ronald stated most of his victims agreed to be tied and handcuffed because they wanted to earn money for their addictions. He claimed that if the victims refused, he would let them go without harming them. This may explain why Ricky Wallace was able to leave. Okay, yeah, okay, so two things. I was wondering Mm -hmm. why. I was wondering why he had let Ricky Wallace go because I don't remember. I don't remember what he said in the documentary. And then I remember like going back to Anthony Sowell when he had let maybe Lala, the one that went by Lala go. And she was like, I promise I won't tell nobody like, like, you yeah. good. like, I wonder if it was a situation like, like that, or was it because he refused? And then too, how is he? So he's explaining what happened in detail, but he's leaving out the murder parts like how is he explaining all the details but refusing to admit guilt i don't know that's kind of weird what is the what is the name of it i don't want to sound stupid but it's a certain (laughs) because i know i'm gonna mispronounce it it's a plea that you can take where you basically are confessing but you're not what is it an alfred plea um Hold on. Mm -hmm. The Alfred plea, Alfred guilty plea, is a plea of guilty containing a protestation. Did I say that right? (laughs) (laughs) Did you? Of innocence. So you're kind of. I like to protest. So it means, yeah, the defendant pleads guilty, but does not have to specifically admit to the guilt itself. Oh, So you're pleading guilty, but yeah interesting yeah so i'm thinking that's what was going on maybe i've never really heard of that so but maybe yeah yeah i learned that from uh law and order svu (laughs) yep uh yep a trusty dusty not dusty i'm sorry it is a little (laughs) dusty because it's been on forever but (laughs) it's been on for 40 damn seasons it's been on for 40 years did you see I've been wait, watching that since did I was a baby? That uh Tony Baker, I'm sure you did, with the with the squirrel. Yeah. He was like, somebody get iced tea. <laughs> 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 that was, was funny. Okay, 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 okay. 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh Ronald said that his motive for killing them was that he didn't want any witnesses because he didn't want to go back to prison. Being in prison traumatized him because he was sexually assaulted. He says that after his 1996 arrest for rape, he was strongly impacted. He remained in constant negative emotional states and even began showing symptoms of a mental disorder. Not to be funny, (laughs) but he originally went to prison for being arrested for rape, correct? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's saying that he was sexually assaulted in prison. Mm-hmm. Why not be 
you know, why not think this is horrible? I would never want anybody to go through what I went through. Why then? How could you justify uh, you that? That, does, that makes no yeah. sense. It would make more sense. And this is not to justify it, but it makes more sense for someone to have experienced sexual trauma as a child. And then, and then grow up and, and do the do same thing. Those yeah. things. Yeah. But to have like done cycle. it. Yes, but to have done it and then have it done to you and you're like, oh, my God, this messed me up. Now I'm going to go out and keep doing it. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, there's clearly something wrong with him. I mean, clearly. they said he had a mental disorder. So, Oh, yeah, that's true. I don't know. That's so crazy. But then why did he only begin showing symptoms of a mental disorder after he was arrested? He he think he's slick because it was never me unless he was just never tested or anything. But maybe it was after he got raped. Oh, or was sexually assaulted. Maybe I mean I, that to me I thought that's what I kind of thought that's what he was getting at. Was like he went to prison. Oh. It was horrible. He was sexually assaulted. Then he started maybe going through depression, manic depression. I don't. I don't. You know. I, I don't, don't know. know. It don't make. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. It doesn't. Since. It doesn't. After accepting a plea bargain on September 23rd, 2008, Ronald Dominique was found guilty on all charges and sentenced to eight consecutive life sentences as he should have, mm -hmm. which he is currently still serving at the Louisiana State Penitentiary in Angola. So thank you. Good riddance sad i know that it took all of that it took all of that had it not been for ricky there's no telling how many more people would have died and that is a damn shame i know and then yeah because that was only 23 that we know of mm -hmm. and that he admitted to because he mm -hmm. probably don't even remember how many people he killed yeah, especially how quickly he was moving through and how yeah. he was disposing them. It was just like, what? Yeah. Um, I would say, I feel like for my final thoughts, mm -hmm. I feel like I expressed most of it. I feel like, again, the same with all these other cases. I feel like it took so long for them to connect it because they really didn't care. So they just Obviously. let it happen. And then I'll say if you don't, because we have been, wouldn't, I wouldn't say bashing the documentary, but <laughs> we haven't been oh. favorable. But I would mm -hmm. just look at clips on YouTube and I would suggest the clip of he, him being arrested because I feel like he was putting on, putting on the act. Yeah, yeah. When he, because yeah. where where your cane come from? Because I think, he, or was that somebody else? But I feel like he had a cane. Yeah, I think so. I but don't. He was looking I don't pitiful remember. though. He, I remember him looking pitiful. Now that you explained, like when you said yeah. it, I was like, okay, I do remember that. I don't really have any more final thoughts. I said how I felt. Um, like you said, I don't. It should never have come to this. I don't. I think. You know, it's sad that he felt like, again, that he felt like they were easy targets. It's sad mm -hmm. that he was proved correct in the sense that it took all those years and all those deaths in order for them to get him. But luckily they did get him and he's rotting in prison. So that yep. is all, folks, for part two of Ronald Dominic. <laughs> Please follow us on Instagram at It's a Strange World Podcast, Twitter at Pod Strange World, and on Facebook and TikTok at It's a Strange World After All. Also, if you are listening to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and like the show, please go ahead and give us a five star rating. And if you're feeling extra strange, please write a review. Please and thank you. Yes, we would love to hear from you. What did you think of this week's episode? Also, if there's anything else in the world of strange or true crime cases that you would like us to cover, let us know. If you have any personal stories involving true crime 
or the supernatural, we would love to have you on the show and share them with our listeners. We are doing movie reviews of the horror, thriller, slasher, and true crime genre. So if you have any movies or documentaries and want to hear our uncensored, unsolicited opinions on them, you can email those submissions to it's a strange world after all at gmail.com or DM us at any other social media platforms D mentioned. And if you want to say, hey there, we will be here. Thank you for tuning into another episode of It's, it's a, a Strange, strange world, world After, after all. all. And thank you as always for keeping it strange with us. See you next week. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.